Hello my soccer universe and welcome to another interview if you would like to call it. Uh, it was my great pleasure this time to have Andy from Andy's Football Shirts, a great Instagram account that I urge you to uh, look at and subscribe to, to chat with him. He has an absolutely amazing collection of um, jerseys with print on their match worn jerseys um, that you know there is always something special there and the way he organizes his page and we talk about a little bit uh, in our chat uh, is he always has you know in, in Instagram you have like all, all, all three columns and every shirt gets three separate posts where you have one uh, with the front side of the shirt one with the back side of the shirt and one with uh, pictures of the player that he actually has the shirt with wearing it so it's really 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 uh, nice great and in addition he is a really great guy to uh, chat chat with we have been in contact uh, for quite a while uh, he made me the this amazing uh, mystery exchange uh, box where, you know, this Betis shirt was in there, uh, this Everton shirt was in there, and also a Torino shirt was in there. So um, that was where we then got started. And then, um, yeah, we have a few things uh, that we always said, yeah, let's chat. And uh, he's probably the one guy where I actually I even type on the phone with, which is something I absolutely hate, but uh, it, we, we often had so much fun uh, that, uh, yeah, I just went for it and did it. So, yeah, uh, it was great to chat with him for once in person. Now, few caveats in there. You get it again unedited, uh, at least sound-wise. My the caveat is, of course, that my internet connect connection this year is really going downhill. You saw it already with Idris, where I started, started, started with the phone uh, to record, and it took me forever to edit. Now, this time, we did. Uh, I said, okay, if it doesn't work on the computer, and I know that the, com the, the computer has so many additional processes that it might be more stable with the doing it on the phone. And it worked for a while. I think 13 minutes you have me on and then I just needed to uh, turn off the camera and then I got when I got the video from um, uh, from zoom there are a lot of no camera signs in there which don't look very appealing so I spent some time of at least putting the logo for uh, of my channel in there so whenever i'm talking this is there now the other thing is that the algorithm is in such a way especially when andy is showing some of his really really nice shirts that it cuts a little bit too often to me although i'm not saying anything but there is no footage of his there <laughs> so uh it annoys me and i have to do for future videos i have to figure this one out this. In any case, it's a fun chat. We'll talk from everything from um, when you buy jerseys and being patient to quirks on the jerseys between player issue and replicas, also between how jerseys were used um, in the old times, meaning the 90s and, and, and so on, and how it's now, how less durable the jerseys are. Um, so yeah, there's a, f a few things there. And then of course, uh, we get to the South 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 subject where we both, um, you know, he's an Everton fan. Uh, I am a Lusk fan and at that moment, our teams were not doing all that great. And so we talk, we kind of are commiserating together uh on that there is a whole lot of talk about everton in there which is something i did not necessarily anticipate but it's something interesting because you see uh you get to expect uh you get this perspective of a club that doesn't feature too often on my channel hence i'm wearing also this wonderful everton shirt so enough of me blathering please enjoy my chat with andy yes work. yes should work okay hello Good. Oh, Andy, you have the same shirt. <laughs> yeah. Nice to finally. I'm uh, very glad you. Nice to finally speak to you in person. You know, as it as it as it were. One hundred percent. I mean, uh, we have been chatting so much, and I always say I. You're probably probably, probably the one person where I do chat uh, and type, or even on the, on 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 the phone sometimes, but I absolutely hate doing that. So <laughs> speaking in person is so much better. Yeah, I'm too old school with the uh, all the <laughs> time. Yeah, way. yeah. I think I think you mentioned that to me once, so I'm glad that we're finally able to uh, chat. Uh, mm. You know, have a call over Zoom uh, makes a change than 
DM and on Instagram or whatever. Yes, yes, exactly. Nah, it, uh, I'm, I'm absolutely happy to have half half here and, you know, we are recording this also for my channel. So I hope many people will uh, then come to your Instagram more as well. So that's hopefully an edit bonus. Thank you. As yeah. I said, I don't have, I don't have much of a program. However, I want to send you one. Uh, we'll start with one question. We'll take it from there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and and we should probably mention that. Of course, you know, you know I said we're, ma we're matching, uh, matching the shots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I always try to dress for the um, for uh, the guests that I'm having or uh, who I'm chatting with. Mm -hmm. And I went, you know, I don't have uh, Queens of the South yet. I don't, Queen of the South yet. I don't have Rangers. Yeah. I was thinking about Everton, but then I said, no, you're Scottish. I, I like that shirt mm. <laughs> so yeah. much. So, and we got the playoffs coming. Well, we're on the same side of the draw, aren't we? So, um, yeah. I think any of those four teams could, could make it, you know, on, on their day. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Absolutely. Happens. No, it's a wide open draw. I mean, here in Austria, everyone was very, uh, um, I don't want to say jubilant, but very happy with the draw because of that reason. You think you have a chance, although I don't think that Austria will make it past Wales, to be honest. No. 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 I just I just don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I might be surprised before. I think ordin way, the... ordinarily, no? you, ordinarily, you probably would, but given your um, your form, which is, hasn't been that consistent, then I guess anything can happen. Whereas Scotland, yeah. are, Scotland are probably more buoyant, uh, you know, in terms of where we've been the last 15, 20 years, we're now hitting a, hitting a nice uh, sweet period now. So we're, we're sort of, uh, you know, less pessimistic than normal. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I'm actually, I mean, I think we both, have not been at the World Cup since '98, as far as I remember. So I didn't realize nice. that for Austria. I didn't realize it had been so long. No, I mean we were in the playoffs for 2002, where Turkey completely washed us away. Mm -hmm. And since then, uh, we have not even been close at one point. I mean, at the closest I think we were was 2014. If we would have gotten something in Sweden, we would have made it to the playoff. But definitely not more than that. Wow. It's, it's the longest wait Austria ever had. I had a long time. Well, it's a long time for us, but even longer time for for you guys. Who you know, I'd probably say, you know, generally speaking, have a bit more talent than, than than we do. So yeah, that is a long time. Yeah, it is. But you know, um, like Scotland, we had very dark ages in the two thousands. Mm. I mean, that was the worst period of them all for Austria, mm. I think, ever. I do even remember that um, the head of Europe later was a friendly but they lost Canada, and basically everyone said, "Yeah, packeting, <laughs> it's not worth it." <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. even a, pet a petition that Austria should resign as a host from the Euros, or the team should be withdrawn. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, when it was joined with Switzerland. I remember the, the fans didn't exactly. want you guy, oh, you didn't want your team uh, a, a playing at the tournament, even though you were hosts. Yes. That's pretty bad. Yes, exactly. No. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I mean, the positive was that a uh, year before the tournament at the Under-20 World Cup, Austria made it to the semifinals. And then the entire nation wanted that team to play at the Euros. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. But yeah, it's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, it, it, it'll, it'll, it'll be curious. I actually, you know, I'm split because I think change should come, but uh, so maybe not qualifying would be good, but I think it would be high time for Austria to qualify again because that generation that they have at the moment, to be honest, this is the best in a long time. Uh -huh. so, we'll, yeah. see, we'll see what happens. No we'll hard feelings. Happens. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You yeah. know, I would say, I mean, if it comes to Austria, Scotland, I would back Scotland. <laughs> In the sense that, not that I personally root, but, but I think Scotland has, has, has a real chance of advancing there. Because you've done us twice in qualifying. Yeah. Well, a draw we, got, and, 
I guess we got that behind us. But um, yeah, so, so I think any of those four teams, as I say, I think any of them on their day, Wales, yeah, you guys, Ukraine, ourselves, any any of them, it's up for grabs. It's wide open. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, pretty cool. But let's talk jerseys. Yeah. And what I want to know is, when did you catch the book? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I guess um, I probably caught it most of all um, when I went to university. And, I, and um, mm-hmm. well, but maybe a little bit before that, I had some, you know, maybe some part-time jobs and paper rounds and so on as a teenager where I would start to accumulate my own uh you know my own money which I could do with what I want and then yeah. you know, go and buy you know whichever shirt I wanted basically um because before that I'd have to rely on you know if I was lucky enough to get you know a shirt from my parents or maybe like a hand-me-down from like an older cousin or something like that um or maybe you know football shirts are few and far between uh, or maybe like a dodgy one if like um, you know, somebody went on, you know, my auntie went on holiday or something and would bring back like, uh, uh, I think I, re- I remember getting the fake uh, Juventus one from the Ch- uh, Champions League final uh, with the... Ah, you showed me that one. That was so, that's yeah, so cool. <laughs> the blue one with the yellow star. I think yeah. the... Oh, yeah. The 95 final, I can't remember. But yeah. But they yes. were few... In, yeah. So they were few and far between until until my sort of teenage years and then like um you know my university years as well after that um and I guess I caught the bug yeah probably around about then and uh but since then I've completely probably like completely overhauled my collection because in recent years I've been more focusing on you know things like match worn match warns or player issues um and other shirts mm-hmm. that I've had, maybe I've picked up a better version of it or, a, or like, um, you know, a, a, another one that's in better condition. So, um, but yeah, so I've, that's probably, you know, since I'm 34 now, so uh, probably been, yeah, seriously collecting, yeah, since I was probably about 18. Um, so a long time now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's... Because that's the uh, that is one of the, the the one thing I think I tr- in my previous talk I also said. I mean, this collecting. I mean, you have a few shirts and then you suddenly you glide into this, and yeah, then man. you slowly grow into it. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, I, it was when I was yeah. at university, sort of browsing through eBay, that I started picking up on a few um, things to look out for with shirts, like whether that's like. Uh, you know, a Scotland shirt that might be a player issue version, for example, as opposed to a replica. Um, and you just like, just hours of scrolling through sites like eBay and other websites, you just, you just learn. And yeah, like, like you say, after that, you just caught the bug. So I've had the bug for a long time and my collection sort of totally changed since then. But yeah, uh, um, I've been collecting, yeah, probably seriously since, yeah, since about, since university, probably a little bit. How how many shirts do you roughly have? I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, I actually don't know, but probably over two hundred. I don't know if it's three hundred. I'm not. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But e- easily over two hundred, I'd say. Easily over two hundred. Yeah, I I'll probably need to do a, a bit of a, an audit and check the number. <laughs> Thing is, I started. Uh, I actually started Instagram as a way of just documenting my shirts because otherwise yes. just, they just get thrown away in the closet and, uh-huh. and maybe some of the better ones get hung up and then, a, and then a load more just in boxes and um you start to lose track so I guess Instagram yeah. is a way of keeping track um or like keeping like, like absolutely some... love your page I absolutely yeah, I absolutely you. love browsing through your page I mean especially the way uh, well, what well, well, I, I in my way when I go, you uh, there's always the three pictures next to each other, and you always make three posts that is all nicely next to each other. Uh, yeah. It is very, very well done. <laughs> I have to say, I've tried like I've not always done it that way. I've done it 
some other ways before, but that's that's probably the way I've been doing it for yeah, maybe a year or two now. Um, I've been trying to do it that way. The problem I had was I'd already uploaded a bunch of shorts, and then I decided I wanted to upload them in a different way. So a lot of them I've had to re-upload, and I've still got like yeah. loads more that I've just either never uploaded or just haven't got around mm-hmm. to uploading. Or maybe a bunch that like I want to get printed first before I like uh, take pictures and upload them. So uh, there's there's loads more still to come. Um, just depends what kind of mood I'm in and, or like what kind of free time I've got in order to like take the pictures properly and upload them. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I have the same problem. I I actually because I saw you doing it, others. I wanted to do. I'm trying to do the same thing, but I have not uploaded anything. I mean, I've six the my first six shirts i want to do it chronologically kind of uh-huh. my first six shirts are on my instagram uh with a little story and so on but then i didn't find the time i the last two three months have been so busy for me that yeah 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 i like that idea i don't even know if i could if i could i could probably put them up in terms of like when they were released but i don't think i could really remember the order i got them in and also like a bunch of the shirts that I had when I was a lot younger, I no longer have anymore because I've yeah. either ruined or like I sold them to like buy something else or maybe I replaced them. So I don't really have that um, that same thing that you have where you've got like, you've got quite a few shirts like the, the Italy uh, 91, for instance, that you had at the time. Yeah. I don't have a lot of examples of that because they either got beat yeah. up or like, you know, I never, you know, maybe I should have kept them, but I didn't, or, or like I replaced them or whatever. Um, so I don't really have mm. a whole lot like that. And I think it's pretty, I think it's cool that you do, that you still have those. Because um, there's a few that I wish I've barely I given any, hold of. I've barely given anything away that I ever had. I mm. only have got, I got rid of the fakes that I got. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the only thing where I ever said, but other than that, I, keep them and yeah there are some interesting stories with the, some some of the last jerseys that i have because one i got from a brother because there was an exchange program where you gave uh away your old shirt you got the new one and my brother wanted to get the new one blah 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 some, something like that so yeah but i'm i was saying i have the order roughly down but i for instance don't remember that i got the frost shirt or the ajax shirt first that is just um I don't remember. I roughly know I got them around the time that they were released because that's when they were available. But I don't know the exact order there anymore. But sometimes I can kind of, um, you know, the, my first 10 years of collecting, I can roughly get it. And then fortunately, I started when I got really a lot of shirts, I started filming myself unpacking. Uh-huh. And that helps a whole lot figuring out which one I got, uh, in what order I got them. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. good that you it's good that you know that and uh that you got like some sort of either memory of that or you've got that documented down somewhere. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yes. No, I have a I have an Excel sheet. I know at the moment I'm at 248. Okay. So of course now the big question is which one will be 250? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Need to make it something good. Yeah, should be something good. I mean, I have, uh, I have a few things in mind, but let's see how it goes. How, yeah. How, how it will go from there. Uh, I have been yesterday. I, I because because I, I said I had such a tough day at the work. I decided I need to kind of reward myself with a shirt, and I couldn't decide on one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I at the moment I wanna get some, you know, I say French, Dutch, German club yeah. shirts or shirts for the World Cup. And yeah. I wanna get a blue German shirt because all my German shirts are not blue. Uh, there, there's nothing blue except the Hertha Berlin, which is dark blue. Yeah. So I want to have it. And I saw this beautiful Armenia Bielefeld special issue shirt from last season. Mm-hmm for around 60 and I have been looking at that for for quite a while but I always said nah they might get relegated maybe it's not worth it blah 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 
then yesterday I was ready to buy it and they had increased the price again. It went uh -huh. from 60 euros to uh, 70 and I said, nah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> missed the ball on that one. Yeah, exactly. But you know, it's maybe a sign that I shouldn't get it either way. <laughs> yeah, sometimes take these things as a sign. Um, and also it's interesting what you're saying about um, getting a shirt, like getting something to like reward yourself and much the same. Um, or also it's like, I'll say, you know, if, if something, you know, really big happens in football, like in a certain match or whatever, I think I need to get that shirt or like I need to get that shirt with that player on it. Um, yeah. Like a big one, like I remember like in 2017, um, the uh, El Clasico match, I was watching that and I think it was like March or something. And it was the one where Messi ends up scoring the winner really late on and he held his shirt up to the Bernabeu. Um, and I think they actually, Real Madrid went on to win the title. But at the time, I think that Barcelona, I think Barcelona put themselves in the ascendancy with that win, but then ended up losing the title. But anyway, I remember thinking, I need, you know, I need, in that moment going online that night and ordering it, thinking I need that shirt. <laughs> Just because like, they were like fouling him all the game. Um, and I think at one point he had like a bloodied mouth and he was playing with like a tissue in his <laughs> mouth. And then um, yep. he went on and scored the winner really late on. And then when he just held his shirt up, I thought, I, you know, I need to get that one. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I went on and ordered it. Um, but certain little things like that happen, either like moments like that that you're watching, you know, on the television or just like moments in your life. Maybe you've, done something personally or like you've had a, as you say you've had a bad week or whatever and you just think oh I need a you know I need something to like uh reward myself or like something to like pick me up you know um and you just like sort yeah. of buy those shirts in the moment I'm much the same mm. no it, uh, it's definitely I mean I have this reward and anyway if there's something written up I have kind of this inner reward culture I need to get me something and yeah, hmm. I have this in me, but then I very often have when I have I'm waiting for a long time for a shirt to come, I kind of feel I need to get it. And then I, off, I had a peer period, but then I bought off my second one because the first one didn't arrive. And that's kind of the one thing that I'm trying to be more aware to really wait until an extra shirt arrived and not be in this vulnerable position where you need it, really need to have something right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, it's important to pace yourself at times. Otherwise, it gets carried up. You just get carried away. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Too, too many shots. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And also, there's absolutely a, the thing I've learned. Um, you know, there's always another. There's always another opportunity to get something. You know, might might not. You know, if you miss yeah. out on something. You know, even if it's something that might not come along again for a while. Usually at some point it will it will come around or or maybe something else will come around and you'll get that instead, you know. Absolutely. I this is something I, I had to learn a little bit the hard way, but I I totally agree. As things sometimes it takes two, three years or so on, and then maybe the shirt is not even that interesting anymore, but suddenly you see it. Yeah, that's that's the one I wanted to have back then. Yeah. So I cannot agree more. So this, uh, the patience is important, I think. Uh, yeah. And yeah, sometimes you got to strike, but, uh, but, uh, but most, most of the time you can really wait around for something to get it maybe at a better price. Yeah. yeah for, for that. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I, I just try to think. I don't have a, uh, no, I mean, a recent example would be this, uh, the Egypt shirt that I just got, but I didn't get it from people. I think I paid around the same price that it was back then, the 2010 Egypt home with the Pharaoh on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one, a uh, recent That's... one for me was, um, one that I jumped the gun on probably was the Norway away one, the really, the uh, like the current one, yeah, um, mm -hmm. wasn't for sale um, in the UK for a long time, and and it wasn't um, listed on the Nike website. Um, there was a way for me to get it from 
uni sport and I think they're in are they in Denmark, I think. Or somewhere in Scandinavia. Yes, anyway. Denmark. Yeah. They don't ship to the UK anymore because of because of Brexit. <laughs> um but they but we won't go into that anyway. Yeah. Um but I have a mate in uh in Canada and and he I I get some deliveries for him and sometimes he'll take deliveries for me. So I uh, got Uniswort to ship it from Denmark to Canada. And then um, my mate shipped it over to me with a few other um, a few other shirts as well, because I usually try and make, you know, make it at least a few shirts. Otherwise, it's just not worth the shipping. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, then then all of a sudden, it, it, it like, a, like months and months later, it was back available in the UK again on the Nike website. Um, and it was cheaper as well. So... But yeah, I didn't really, yeah, I I didn't really re- regret it because at the time that w- there was no way of knowing that that would happen, and I did really want it uh, with uh, with Haaland on uh, on there as well. Um, so yeah, but uh, yeah, a little bit, you know. In hindsight, you could uh, I could have got a bit a better deal, but there you go. Never mind. I. T- I totally agree. I mean, I had the same thing with the Napoli Maradona shirt, the initial one, the, yeah. with the stripe, with with yeah. the stripes, and a little bit my Cologne uh, Carnival shirt, which uh, half a year later I saw for a better price, but I couldn't get it. Uh, the one thing why why I'm still happy with it, I have it with the printing, and I have all the patches, which I couldn't have gotten otherwise. So, yeah. but yeah, those those I probably paid too much in hindsight, but. So, yeah, that was it. I, you know, you shouldn't regret because at the moment you wanted it this way. So, yeah. And also, you win some and you lose some. There's other times where you might want a shirt, but you'll deliberately hold off because you know there's a good chance that you'll, it yeah. will be cheaper. Um, yes. And for those ones, you know, you, you then you, 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 you sort of win on those ones or you like, make, you know, you know you, you save money on those ones. And then, another yeah. one maybe you overspend a little uh because you jump the gun on it but yeah there's a usually a, it works out in the end i guess overall mm-hmm. now i had a very i have a very re- risk of, i had uh, my wife said she wants to get me for valentine's a shirt and i picked uh i i said well maybe a japan shirt would be nice because i need it for my world cup collection because I think Japan will make it and I knew I've never seen a Japan shirt for under 60 euros um, and so I went to this French uh, site a vintage football area where they had the, the 2006 Japan home and uh, she really liked it and I remember back in the day I thought this was the best shirt at that World Cup uh, not so 100% on that anymore but at the time I absolutely loved it and we got it, um, so she's, I have not gotten it yet, but she has it to, to wrap it. And then I think three days ago, I for the first time see a Japan shirt for 25 bucks. Uh, but it was um, 2014 home, so I actually am happy with the 2000, 2006 because I like that one a bit more than the 2014 one, but yeah. Yeah, I like <laughs> those. Uh... As you said. I really mm. like those 2006 Adidas ones. Um, I would actually like to get the Japan one, maybe with, you know, Nakata or something like that. Um, or Nakamura is mm-hmm. pretty cool, but he played for Celtic, so maybe not him. But uh, definitely Nakata, <laughs> uh, because I've got, I'm trying to get a few of those ones. I've got the Argentina one with Messi, the... Um, what else do I have? Germany with Closer and the France, mm-hmm. uh, the home one. Not I would prefer the away, but I've got the home one uh, with with Zidane. And there's a couple others in that. Like there's a I'd love to get the Nigeria one with the. I know they didn't go to the World Cup, but they had the same template. Yep. Uh, like maybe yep. with a, a culture. Spain but, away is the. Yeah, I've seen your Spain away with where you got it personalized. Yes. That's, yeah, yeah. That was that that was the one that I liked initially. You know, I mean I had hands in Japan at Pompa, but I said I said that I, I thought that looked nice. 
Yeah. But I'm so and so for for I mean I can see that many people like that temple. For me, um, I think it's so two thousands where every yeah. ventilation patch needed to be colored and i mean they did it well for germany and spain with uh the flag and i think in the french jersey looks really nice but i i liked actually of that version i like the milan away that they won the champions league in best because they just outlined it with yeah. a black and red and it looks classier this way than the slivers that are all over but yeah i can see that many people like it so yeah <laughs> yeah i think i think it's like for me like you know, like I like the, my name sets and things like that, and I really like that Adidas name set style. Yeah, with the like. Yes, the, I do agree with that one. With yeah. the uh, three, not the three stripes, but like the well, I think it's actually four, four different. It's four bands right? and then yeah. three. So there's three gaps. Mm -hmm. There's three gap, three gaps yeah. between the bands, like three stripes, um, and it was really. Uh, quite retro at the time. Um, totally. Yeah, I really, really like those ones. I recently picked up a, a fairly cheaply uh, Chelsea away uh, from that 0607 in the same style because I want to get, uh, I want to have a Drogba shirt basically. So I'm going to get that printed yeah. with Drogba <laughs> with the blue, um, <laughs> with the blue Premier League uh, name and number. Because I like, as I said to you before, I like the, I like the Premier League names yes. and numbers when it's a different colour, other than black or white, you know. Hmm. Um, like I've got a Watford, yeah, yeah. I've got a Watford, Watford with Richarlison and red. Um, there's a few Everton ones where they've used light blue instead of black, but it's uh, sorry, dark blue instead of black. Um, but it kind of it doesn't. It's not. It's not all that much different than than black. Whereas the Chelsea one from that year. Mm -hmm. From that style was kind of quite a bright blue um so yeah i'd like to get drogba put on that one um and yeah as i said i'd like to get a couple more internationals in the same in the same style japan would be a great one so yeah look forward to seeing seeing your japan one yes no i i, I totally love this uh the, i mean the japan shirt it was really nice i mean my wife was totally in love with it, so I said, okay, this is a sign that I need to get this one for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, by the way, since you said Everton Dark Blue, um, I I know completely changing the subject now. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. saw that the current Everton Away shirt that you have, I always thought it's black with red, but when I look at your pictures, it looks like more a navy blue. Is this... Which one's that, sorry? Uh, the current Everton away shirt, the one with the uh, uh, red uh, oh, yeah, no, uh, across the chest. Yeah, it's, it's, it is black. It is actually black, yeah. With a sort of... Um, black, okay. Yeah, with a sort of burnt... Like, it's kind of a burnt sort of orange. You know, we don't like to, we don't like to call it red. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, um, it's an unusual one. Um, I don't mind it. Um, it's grown. It's probably grown on me since it was initially released. Because initially I thought, why have we got red uh, on our kit? Mm -hmm. But it has grown on yeah. me a little bit since then. Um, I think they probably could have done. They probably could have done the sponsor a bit better. Like maybe um, you know make it smaller and put it up on the chest or something, and have a full sash. Um, because I know that I don't know if you know us. There's a Man City shirt which is like that, um, an Umbro one from yeah, probably like the Adab Adabayor Tevez period. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the year exactly, but it was a sash, and it, they, yeah. basically the Etihad, yeah, the Etihad Airways they just made it really small and they put it up uh, underneath the. Um, the Umbro logo, I think. So they still had the full sash, which was just yeah, which wasn't interrupted by a sponsor or anything. So I think Everton should have done that, but I don't, I don't know whether Kazoo would have been happy. But there you go. That I think is the problem that the sponsor wants to have the full, the full of them on. Uh, 
But yeah, I, I, I now that you said this with the, the message, I think I remember which way which we were talking, and that yeah, was very, really, very it's smart. A really people, nice but I guess, yeah. I think the sash is uh -huh. uh, is it red and is it like red and black sash or something? I think red, red and black, as far as I, yeah, I and remember. it's on a white, it's on a white base. Um, really, mm -hmm. really nice shirt. I think Les Scott, Les yep. Scott was there at the time because Les Scott was at Everton. And he signed for City around that period. Um, and people like Zabaleta and company. Um, but yeah, I don't know the year exactly. But it's a really nice one. And it's nice that when they've got the sash like that, how they've moved the sponsor. Um, Everton's kit would have looked better if they'd have done something similar. But yeah. Yeah, I do. But anyway, I but I had to say... So that, but uh, why I liked it is, is because if when you look at the short history, it's actually one of the original, uh, I think the original shirt for Everton was that exact design. So I yeah. think it's kind of, a, I mean, I also thought at first, why red? But when you look at it, okay, it does make some sense then in hindsight. Yeah, yeah, there is a story behind that. Um, I think it's like, the, it was known, I don't, I'm not sure on the exact history myself, but I think it was known as like the black watch shirt. Um, I'm not sure exactly why that was, but there was, they did use a shirt basically the same as that. It was black with the with that sort of red, reddish orange, whatever you want to call it, sash. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a, there is a link there, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speaking of weird colors, and this is not soccer, uh, football related now. But I remember when in the NHL, the Los Angeles Kings used to play in yellow and purple. But in the, the, that, that was in, in the 80s, but you couldn't call purple purple back then. So they called it forum blue. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because purple was a girl's color. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the craziest things that I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a period. Like... It reminds me. Yeah, it was really taboo, I guess. Like, well, from what I remember, in the nineties, Scotland had a an away shirt which was pink, and it, it was back then yeah. the only shirts that were pink because, as you say, it was just associated <laughs> with girls. But um, thankfully, yeah. times have moved on since then, um, and people totally you know, like bright colours. But yeah, at the time it was called like I think um, they called it salmon, <laughs> salmon colour. <Yep. laughs> uh, yeah and then another one which was like for political reasons was when rangers had a their orange kit and they've had another one since then but they brought one out in 2002 um during the dick advocate years they brought an orange mm -hmm. kit but then for political reasons they didn't want to call it orange they called it tangerine <laughs> so um it was that, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah um crazy yeah. Yeah, all sorts of weird things going on in marketing departments at these clubs. Yeah, I sometimes, I, I, I mean, when you look when they release a jersey and then they come up with a color and there's some weird um, name to it, I always feel it's a little bit too much. Just call it what it is. Yeah. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, going, going back to that Everton one, the, the current one. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, I would say it's, it's, def, it's definitely black. First and foremost, to answer your question, and it probably, I'd say, yeah, like I say, it's, it's grown on me since it was initially released. Um, I've, got, mm -hmm. I've actually got two at the moment. I've got a Moise Keane one, which is from the Carabao, Carabao Cup before he was yes sold. Um, and I've mm -hmm. got, uh, I've actually got a James Rodriguez one as well, which is a Premier League one, which was prepared. I don't know exactly if it was prepared for the season starting or it could have been prepared for him at the end of the last season because they wore it in the, la the final uh, match against Man City. We got thrashed, mm -hmm. like, I think 5-0 or something. But anyway, they, yeah. James Rodriguez didn't play. I think he was injured. But So it was either... Um, so it was never worn by him, but it was it's from, like, um, from the kit room. So it's either issued to him maybe for the Man City match um, or otherwise they just you know printed a bunch of them um, before this season started um, before he was sold um, 
but yeah. So I've got two, I've got two, so I don't plan on adding any more. <laughs> two is enough. No. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I have to say that the uh, one from the Carabao Cup has the really nice name set, uh, the numbering, yeah. yeah, with the Saint Rupert's Tower. This is really that that's a really nice feature, I gotta say. Yeah, I like that. I like that when they do the cup different style because for a couple of seasons they are Everton just still use the Premier League um, mm -hmm. style in the cups, but they used to use they used to have cup printing for a while, um, but then. I don't really know what happened. I think they just got lazy they, they, because like the women's team was still using the uh, cup names and numbers, uh, but the men's team just they were still using Premier League. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, there's some funny things going on with the, with the, with the Everton kits um, that the players use. For, in, for instance, there's been instances where if they've gone out the Carabao Cup, the kit man's just ripped off the Carabao patch and then put an FA Cup <laughs> patch <laughs> on over the over the top, and you can still see like the the residual glue, uh, which mm -hmm. is like on the shirt underneath the uh, or sort of around the FA Cup badge. There's little things yeah. like that where yeah, it's better when it's done properly, and it's better when it's done with cup, uh, you know, cup name and number. Mm. I have a very similar story to that. Uh, the one match one shirt that I have is from a last player in from the 98-99 season, mm. which was the season where I actually last went to go for the championship and ended up being completely bankrupted because uh, our owner turned out to be uh, his bank. He basically had his riches because he artificially added zeros to his accounts. Uh, that way... <laughs> And then it went all bust just when we made a run. But uh, the fun thing is that suddenly uh, cash was missing. Mm -hmm. And so we got a sponsor. And so the, we had a collar sponsor, which of course in Austria, which was his bank. And then we got a new sponsor, which was a local notebook company in blue and white, which is of course the rival's color. So this was already not a good sign. And they glued it just over that. And the bank was just a very thin thinly written uh text so it, it it was not so noticed it was as this white block with blue lead lettering but if i have the shirt now you can still feel the <laughs> the old sponsor yeah. below it yeah. i think this is such a uh, interesting touch on the shirt i mean the shirt with that additional sponsor i know it was needed looks horrible but yeah austrian shirts and sponsors anyway a different yeah. story <laughs> Yeah, I love I love things like that. That's like what um, that's one of the things I love about collecting the mat, the you know the match either issued or worn uh, shirts. Um, these like mm -hmm. little quirky things that you learn. Um, and there's a guy as he's a good good friend of mine who I've known for a few years now. That um, he's a real he's a bigger Everton collector than I am. He's he's got he's got like much rare some rarer shirts and some some much older shirts uh than, than mine and he's been collecting a long time and i can always like if i ask him something i know that he'll have the answer i'll say oh do you know why it was mm -hmm. like this and he'll say yeah he'll like and then he'll like share that knowledge with me um which is super cool because it's not like there's not that many people in the world that have that like that <laughs> unique specialism of knowledge uh, where they'll know yeah. exactly why um you know this this patch was used or like uh, why the sponsor was different or whatever you know and he's got that um he'll know things he'll know even like down to like textures of he'll be able to tell you like well if the texture of the sponsor is like this um it's a player shirt if it's a different way then it's a replica and th you know little things like that that um you can <laughs> yeah. only like learn when you're like totally like into it um but yeah, it's good to like connect with these people across the across the globe and and learn these different things. Yeah, I I, I couldn't agree more. Although yeah. I mean, for me, it's sometimes so funny if um you read how those stories how shirts were different for a certain match, which is something that when you're just a fan, you don't really realize. But when you're really eagle eyed, you can find. But I mean, yeah. I mean, for for me, the most glaring was when. Leipzig played Spurs in the Champions League 
when mm -hmm. half the players were a different sponsor than the others. Mm -hmm. Because it didn't work out that well. I think the one had a silver sponsor, the other one had then a white that was uh, much bolder and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was watching that match and it didn't, I didn't realize that. And then I read the next day and said, yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> this was the case. This was the case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, but it, it's funny how it's, it's only a certain type of collector or or fan that will even notice these things. Um, yeah, and then like those the ones you know they're like stuck in your head and like it or like um, sometimes when you spot something as like as like a, you know when if I spot something for example I think oh I need to get one of those um, because like. Yeah. It was at like um, a few years ago when Everton were in the Europa League. They they had to put like this blue sort of tape over the Umbro logos on the sleeve because it wasn't in the UEFA regulations. Uh -huh. And um, as soon as I saw the the players wearing that, I thought I've got to try and get my hands on like one of those. <laughs> Unfortunately, like I was, I was able to, so I was like pleased with that. Certain Super. things, and other like for other people watching probably wouldn't have even noticed. But when you're like a massive kit nerd, you like spot these yeah. things, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, it, I mean, I I have to say this is something I'm getting slowly into the, to see these little differences. But I I remember the first time I real I, I realized that there's a big difference between I, mean, I almost knew that the players wear something different that the fans have most of the fun mm -hmm. but the first time it was when i got my 11 12 milan shirts and i saw that the striping on the sleeves for the replica went around and for the players it had a it was only it was mostly red the underside was red because there was an additional ventilation patch there and i remember how annoyed i was at that that uh yeah i mean i i still love the shirt that i had i have but i was really annoyed no it's not what they are wearing yeah. in the way. what year what so, year was that Sorry. the 11 12 the 11 12 okay. home shirt the one with the thin stripes mm -hmm. and the white collar yeah but that was the first that was the first of oh it's more and more recent i mean i knew when I got this, the last shirt that I got, uh, that I just sold to about, it was a player issue, it's a Reebok, where you can definitely tell there's a difference in material, it's a much thicker, much more breathable material, and it was at the time when uh, this shirt was worn by the player for the entire season, so they, yeah. they didn't yeah. issue a new shirt for every, for every match, so it, it was yeah. really, really durable in that sense, Yeah, which yeah. is something I miss a yeah. little bit. <laughs> and also during that 11... 12 was that or was that around the period where they added us were also doing tech fit so there was like a couple of different player versions so yes. there was like a, a, yes. a regular a regular player shirt which was probably slimmer fitting than a replica but still baggy on like it would still be kind of baggy on an athlete and then there was another mm -hmm. a tech fit one with like it was even tighter, almost like a cycling yes. jersey or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. That that was the time when when this came out. Uh, I know eleven to uh, ten, eleven for sure. They had the one that was super tight. I'm not sure if the eleven, twelve was that tight. I'm yeah. sure they must have had a tight, but it was not that as obvious anymore. Like it looked like I, I uh, almost the patches that they had to kind of tied down it almost looked looked like they were wearing a bra in a way if you had if you looked at it on the plain shirt yeah so but i don't think they had that a, a season later but I, I still think they had very tight fitting shirts yeah back then i was always intrigued by getting one of these but never got around to yeah it's interesting what you're saying about um you know the ones that would be used all season around were like more durable because the player the player shirts have gone from being more durable to like being like less durable now so like yeah. now they'll have like three shirts for a match they'll have like one for the first half one for the second half and then like a, like especially at, at, at the at the elite level anyway at the premier league for example um yeah exactly and then they'll have a spare and, and it's now like they're 
they're so flimsy and like it's just like tr you know everything's tra transfer transfer materials um, instead of like fully embroidered and stuff. Whereas back in the nineties, it was the opposite. The the player version was more durable. It was like better quality. It was made to last more than than the fan versions. So it's funny how things yep. have like completely flipped on their head now. I do understand why it's happening this way, but I actually I yeah. missed this more durable player issue in a way. I, I think there was, I mean, there's a certain sustainability to it. You had uh, your kids for the entire season. <laughs> yeah. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I even remember this was in the very early 90s. Um, I remember last, they, uh, they did not even have the names. I mean, you, they had shirts. I think they were all either size L or XL mm -hmm. with the different numbers from 1 to 17. And then whoever was picked got that shirt. They didn't even have different sizes. So mm -hmm. I, I, I remember they got, there was a really small player and he had such, I mean, uh, the shirt was way too big on him. <laughs> yeah. Well, even now at, um, at Queen of the South, um, my hometown team, they, their players, I think, get four shirts um, mm -hmm. um, or like four shirt, four of each shirt. So if they would get four home shirts, four yeah. away shirts. And usually they would get, they would sell, if they're able to, they would sell two sponsorships. Mm -hmm. um, so two of the shirts would go to sponsors at the end of the season. And then two of the yeah. shirts, the player would get to keep. Um, so he could like keep one and give one to like his family or whatever. So even yeah. nowadays, like, you know, I guess people like shirt collectors get carried away with like, you know, player player worn and, and player issue shirts, but you forget sometimes at the lower levels, these you know, these things are still going on where they may only get a few shirts a season. Yeah, but I think that I, I there's a there's a total charm in that, I have to say. I, I really like I mean I even remember uh people saying that if you swapped a shirt uh back in in the day, most players had to pay them for the replacement. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, think, you just didn't give, give it away. Yeah, probably like 10, 10 or 15 years ago at Queen of the South, for example, the players would get probably just one long sleeve shirt and one short sleeve shirt. Um, mm -hmm. And then when we reached the, um, <laughs> by the end of the season, the numbers on the back of the shirts would be completely battered. They would be like flaking mm -hmm. away because they're just like plastic yeah. transfers, you know? Um <laughs> So like in, two, in 2008, when we reached the Scottish Cup final, they got special shirts made for the semi-final and the final, um, which was really mm -hmm. cool because like they got a unique one-off shirt and it had the match details embroidered and things like that. But also it just probably just made them look, look and feel better because if they were going into the final with a shirt that they've worn all season where the number is like yeah. battered <laughs> on the back of it, it's like, you're not probably feeling your best, are you? You're not feeling like an elite footballer, you know, especially if you're coming yes, up against absolutely. a much bigger and stronger team. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite interesting that. I think that they probably, you know, I guess like getting a whole bunch of like brand new shirts for the final probably like made them feel a bit better about themselves, I guess, in a way. Um, uh -huh, yeah. Instead of just like wearing the same, <laughs> the same ones that are totally <laughs> ruined, you know. Um, yeah, <laughs> but you know, especially with the plastic transfer numbers, they're not durable at all anymore, which I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. I miss the flock in a way. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple of um, older Everton shirts here that I could show you that are, yeah. that are yeah, um, sure. just on that topic of durability, you know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I've got a couple here. They're the same shirt, but there's a there's a slight difference. This is uh -huh. a, um, this one here is a this is actually a World Cup winner shirt. Matter I say. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm quite I'm quite pleased with this one, but yes, yeah, these were like built. These were really built to last. This is a long sleeve um, version, uh -huh. so. They've got the just one thing they've got is like this full 
uh, uh -huh. embroidery all the way through. Whereas on a replica, with the badge would just be stitched on like round round the edge. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the ways you know that's a player one. And I've got another one here, which is probably um, one of the rarest shirts I have because this one is a uh, Slavin village. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if you see on this one, it's um, it's blue at the top here. It goes blue, yeah, white. Uh -huh. Yellow. Yeah. Whereas this one goes uh -huh. yellow, white, blue, <laughs> right? Yeah. So they basically took yeah. this piece of material and put it on upside down. Um so that's pretty cool. So the the Billich one, this is the rarer one that the the, uh -huh. the the players wore at the beginning of the season. And then um I think they actually they wore this shirt for two seasons. So I think it was 97, 98, and 98, 99. And I think mm -hmm. Matarazzi was there the second season. So he's I don't really I don't think Matarazzi would have ever had one of these ones. But anyway, um so the players wore these for the first few games, and then a fan spotted uh the different, uh, spotted the, the problem that it was the wrong way uh -huh. around. And then I think it was like it made it was like front page news on the Liverpool Echo newspaper. <laughs> and um, so the club said that the unsurprisingly said that the players were wearing it the wrong way around because otherwise they would have to replace like all the all yeah. the shirts that the fans had bought. Um, but I mean, mm -hmm. so financially it made sense for them to say, "Oh, the player shirts are wrong," rather than yeah. the fans' <laughs> shirts were wrong. Um, uh -huh. But I just think that's funny because I guess you'll never know which one was right and which one was wrong because the club were bound to say that that was the players' ones were wrong because yeah, um, like I say they would have to like replace all the fan jerseys and they didn't want to do that. Um, so then the players. Yeah, they only they only wore them that style for a first few matches, and then they switched the other way around, which was the one that all the you know the, that the, all the fans had. Um, mm -hmm. But when you compare a shirt like this to the shirts that they, like for instance, for instance, this one's like this is a double XL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so it's, it's massive. Giant. It's like massive. It's yeah. totally durable. This like yes. it's got this massive thick like. <laughs> Uh, I love those sponsors that you have had sponsor. this little, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. and it's got like no wonder like the players back then had you know usually wore like vests under the shirt because like yeah. it's not very smooth it's like totally completely rough, yeah. um, yeah, but, yeah, that's quite uh that's probably one of my rarest ones uh now that I've got. I have to say I do regret that was, I had I think it was two years ago I saw exactly this shirt on I mean not the player issue but I saw a shirt like this on Bill Hubbard, the, the youth page and I always had it marked I may get it and then someone else got it and now I regret not getting it because I, I actually always liked I, I really liked that one for some reason I didn't pull the trigger on that one yeah. so yeah I think the fans one would, would still be like really durable I think uh -huh. the only difference is, is like there's a little um, on the fan one. I think there's like a little patch on the bottom corner. I don't know which corner yeah, exactly. it is, mm -hmm. but there's like a little patch that I think says Everton on it or something. Um, mm -hmm. So this one has like there's no patches um, at the yeah. bottom, and then as I Very say, the, the badge is fully embroidered. Um, but aside from that, I think. The replicas probably just. I think they had the same. I think they used the same thick sponsor on the replica. So, I would you, think so. Yeah, and I think you could also get long sleeves on the replicas as well. Mm -hmm. You just it would just have the little uh, patch at the bottom, um, yeah. and then the badge would just be stitched uh, as an oval shape. Um, uh -huh. But aside from that, it's more or less the same. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's an intro. Uh, I'm not a big. F I like I like I like those ones because they're like so quirky. But um, the shade of blue is like all wrong uh, for Everton, and um, the like colours in the middle are kind of yeah. like weird. But um, 
but yeah, and it was they weren't that great. They weren't they weren't doing very well. That was sort of when Walter Smith was trying to um, rescue them back then, um, mm-hmm. and they were like struggling down the bottom, but they managed to stay up. Yeah, but East, yeah. didn't Chelsea didn't Chelsea have a very similar shirt around that time? Yeah, they did, and I've actually seen. Um, I've actually seen. I was a. I was a proxy for a guy getting one of those Chelsea ones, and it was for the. Um, it was issued for the. Uh, I think like the Super Cup final. Mm-hmm. I think they did. They win the UEFA Cup or the. Now the the Cup Winners Cup. They won back then. Yeah, so they were, yeah, but to, to qualify for that, they won the U, UEFA Cup, right? No, no, like it was a Cup Winners Cup that doesn't exist anymore. Right, okay. And um, the Super Cup was the Champions League win against um, Cup, Cup Winners, Winners Cup. Winner, Cup and I yeah. think they played in Real Madrid as, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah. So I got, um, I received delivery for, I was a proxy for, it was going to a mate of mine and then it was mm-hmm. going. To a mate of his or something but anyway he needed it in the UK so I actually was lucky enough to 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 get one and see one and it was just, you know in the same style as Everton with the you know with a foot with an umbral one with the full embroidery and it had the mm-hmm. had the super cup uh patch and it had the super cup the super the, the super cup embroidery as well um and it had the um the actual same same style numbers as this. Is this ah, yeah. Mm-hmm. This umbro style, but it was like uh, it was like a jewel. It was like a jewel layer, so it was like so that it had a black outline. So it was like there was obviously a black felt number applied, uh-huh. and then a slightly smaller white felt number applied. <laughs> um, but it had no name set, so I think it was a spare shirt that was prepared. Uh, prepared with the number on the back but no name but it was still like super like rare uh one off um but yeah th- those umbro ones from that era are like really especially the player ones are like so they're so cool and they're so like different you know they just don't mm-hmm. you just don't get uh shorts like that anymore no no <laughs> <laughs> that's that I, I i i totally love it I mean, uh, with the stories and them well, you told with the fans of having been told that the players were very wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, like, technology has come, like, so far now that it's just, like, the shirts are, like, they're complete, they feel completely different and, like, everything's transferred plastic now. There's no fail or anything. But I, always, but I always wonder uh, if the manufacturers are not going too far sometimes with that technology, because I'm, I mean, I, I I remember in 2002, three when Adidas and Nike had those dual layer shirts. Mm. And then I I once remember Inzaghi uh, in the Champions League game needing to switch his shirt, but he took off the shirt and then he could, uh, for five minutes, he couldn't put it on again. Mm. And suddenly the dual layer was all lost the next, <laughs> well, yeah. the next time around it. Or the tech fit, I mean, yes, we the shirt fits get tighter, but I'm not sure if sometimes they're overdoing it. I mean, Puma is not having that tight fitting shirts anymore that they had like five years ago. Hmm. With that 2002 one that you mentioned, I think a lot of the players ended up just, the kit man would just cut, would cut, yeah. that, out, cut that out on the inside. Because I'm sure I've seen some shirts that like uh, Dougie Beerton, who's the who owns classic football shirts. I'm sure he's done some videos with some uh-huh. player worn ones. And he's like showed the like the dual layers just being like cut out or whatever. Um just because like <laughs> it was just annoying the player. So they would yeah. just ask the kit man to like cut cut them out. So the dual layer just mm-hmm. wasn't there. Yeah, it's that we do it is one of the really weird things that yeah I think we, this was probably the weirdest period in terms of for, for me in terms uh, they wanted to go more to a gear towards the player mm. but they didn't get it right at that time yeah they just ended up with this flappy piece of material that wasn't really serving any purpose i don't think exactly yeah you know? <laughs> but there you go 
Yeah. Yeah, Kappa Gandhi tried around that time with the super tight fitting shorts. Yeah, yeah. Well, for if if you've got an athlete body, I guess that they, they got it right, but not so good for the fans, I don't think. No, absolutely not. Absolutely yeah. not. I mean, this is the reason why I actually make now I decide I'll stick with the replicas because the um, all these athlete versions, I mean, they are very interesting to when I wear them, but I cannot go out with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it yeah, just no. doesn't look right. <laughs> no, not a good look, no. <laughs> yeah. Like the Burkina Faso Kappa Combat that I have. I mean, it's, I bought it XL my size. Mm. It's super, it's super smooth. It's a super interesting material, but this is one that I only wear at home or ha hang here on the back, but I'm not, I'm never going to go out with that one un unless I have a sudden transformation into Schwarzenegger or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But in, the interesting thing about that is that um, like in recent years, for, for example, Everton haven't had, uh, their shirts haven't been any different to the replicas uh even now really? yeah so even now like uh, the like so back back in the, you know the 90s the umbro stuff it was different um mm -hmm. but the stuff they've had in recent years is the same as the fans but sometimes they'll oh. have a diff they'll have a different sponsor or they'll have you know a different style of name set or uh they might have no sponsor or Whatever there might be like subtle differences, but essentially the mm -hmm. the, sh the 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 way the shirts made and the fit of it is just the same as the as the fans. And I thought when they went to Hummel, because I guess I guess now Everton must be one of, if not Hummel's flagship team, certainly one of Hummel's biggest teams. Um, yeah, globally. I thought that they would get they would be like a fan version and a and a player version, but there isn't. Maybe they maybe mm -hmm. they'll do it next season. I don't know, because like you know, because Adidas and Nike and Kappa and some of these other brands they've got you know the specific player version. But yes, um, exactly. But the recent Umbro Everton stuff and um, like I've got another one here I could show you quickly. Um, mm -hmm. This one. Um, this has actually got some differences to the replicas, but essentially it's just the same. Uh, the couple of differences is that there's no, um, this is a Europa League shirt. It's actually one for Samuel Eto'o. So ah. this is quite quite a prize one of mine, but essentially yes. um, they, it's the same as a fan shirt, but they would have been supplied um, with no transfers on, um, mm -hmm. so that we just have the, you just have the umbro, and the um, and the crest, um, and then the kit man would apply the sponsors, and also he would apply, uh, or like the club would would apply a, an umbro transfer on the sleeve. Um, so, but because yep. that wasn't allowed in the Europa League. Um, this one doesn't. Uh -huh. have, I got this it. One doesn't have yeah. the umbro. Uh, it, you would just say umbro, like in a lot across here. Um, but aside from that, it's the same shirt. It's not a different fit or anything. It's not a different material. It's still just the same umbro um, shirt that the fans would get, you know. And it's even got really like you know, it's got like. You know the, the labels inside that would be on the fan <laughs> shirts, you know. Whereas, like on the, the unlike the elite Nike shirts, they like have the just printed uh, wash instructions on the inside. They don't mm -hmm. have any labels. Uh, there's yeah. no wash labels, you know. Wow, oh, that's yeah, that's pretty cool. But if you know so, the little, uh, if you know the little things to look for, you can still you can still tell the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm, exactly that's that's so interesting so, mm -hmm. uh, is it especially this uh that they print on the umbro logo because it's not allowed in europe so they have to do it all themselves this is fascinating yeah so the problem they had and that's that one's from 1415 um 
they were back in the Europa League again in 17-18, and that was when they had the Umbro uh, Diamonds all the way down, and that was when they had mm-hmm. to use. Um, I haven't got I haven't got one here to hand, but um, I could send you a picture. They had to like put blue tape, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. yeah, o- over that um, because Umbro just didn't make the shirts suitable for European competition. <laughs> Yeah, but as I like, it, wouldn't, the rest, it wouldn't happen with Adidas because Adidas shirts would always have, even if they have the three stripes, they would then have a gap. Yes, you know. Yeah. Um, and then if it was a long sleeve, then the three stripes would continue. Um, yeah. Or if it was a short sleeve, they would just stop leaving enough room for a patch. But yeah, it's weird rules anyway. I don't know why. You know, once they- I just wanted to say, yeah. It's, I think it's all about, I mean, uh, UEFA, I think you can go back to nice. They always want to limit the exposure of too much branding, yeah. but it drives me nuts because, you know, um, originally when the Adidas shirts had the three stripes going all over the sleeves, they just put the Champions League uh, logo over the three stripes. But I yeah. guess you want to have it stand out a little bit more, so you need to have the gap. Yeah. This is yeah, also like why FIFA was so upset with, with Cameroon to have the West shirt because this was the first World Cup where they wanted to display the, the World Cup logo on the sleeves. Yeah, 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 that's right. Because when you say that about Adidas, I just think to the 2002 when Zidane scored that uh, volley yeah. against Leverkusen at, at Hamden Park. And yeah, like you say, it was just the star ball was just over the three stripes. I don't really see what the problem is. Absolutely. Was, but... Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, the, all, the all rules that they drive me nuts, and I actually, I mean, um, this with the patches is a nice feature, but I think it got a little bit too too much. I sometimes long back for the simplicity when you just had the shirt, and there were no, it was not so all patched over. There was maybe a, a special embroidery for a cup final or something yeah. like, like that, which is all right. Or if you reach the World Cup, but uh, it gets a little bit, I mean, now the uh, when they have in the national teams the European qualifiers, you have the patch for the uh, the comp- competition you want to qualify to, and on the other side you have the heart logo. It's a little bit overkill. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like this. I've got another one here. Just while you're talking about that, this Scotland one from the Tartan one from '96, whereby ah yes, they weren't My allowed. Favorite. They weren't allowed this. If you look at the pictures from the games at the Euro 96 tournament, uh-huh. the player shirts didn't have this purple um, band. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was completely removed. So it was just this, um, it was just this, this sort of navy color. Yeah, uh, exactly. all, all uh-huh. the way around. Um, this one's actually a um, player shirt as well. It's because it's got the, it's the same with the Ever, and it's got like the full, um, Embroidery from this period. Cool. Yep. Um, I don't know what what match this was used in, but it was. Um, they just had for some matches they just had a number on the front. Um, uh-huh. and they, didn't, they didn't have any names uh, either. It was only at, at Euro ninety six where they then had numbers on exactly. the front, and they had um, they added the name sets as well. So this is either from like a qualifier or a friendly or something. Um, but yeah, it's interesting how even back in like 1996, they were like removing, you know, making Scotland remove that. But then, yeah. like you say, in the Champions League, like six years later, um, you know, Zidane was scoring that goal with the three strikes and, and the star ball over it. It's strange how these things work out. But. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's all it's all. Good. I mean, the other weird rule, uh, I think there's this website called Museum of Jerseys. Where they, which I, I mean, he he has he has a proposal in a while, but it's really interesting. Exactly, about pointing out those differences. The UEFA had a rule that no two teams could have the same display, the same sponsor during a match. And this was a time yeah. when Opel was like sponsoring uh, Milan, Bayern, PSG, Sparta yeah. Prague. Yeah, and it was a uh, total mayhem of getting it. Some uh, some played them without sponsors. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I, then there was another one with B win, wasn't uh, Real Madrid and Milan both had B win? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, 
they had one of them had to change. I can't remember what they'd done exactly, but I think they had to change. I know that I think a German, I want to say it was Bremen, they also had B win, but they couldn't use it in a different competition because of betting laws, and then they put V win. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that on the journey. But I don't know what the what, what, what Milan did at that time. That would be interesting too. Yeah, that's been the case with Everton with the where they can't have um alcohol or betting. So we had Chang for a long time. Yeah. Um, then recently we had Sport Peza, which is a betting, I think they're like an African betting company. But yeah, so they, they either just had a blank shirt or sometimes they would do the, the club's charity, which is ever in the community, um, which is always nice when they do when they put a charity on instead if they can't use yes. their main sponsor. Mm-hmm. Totally agree with that. Uh, but I always long for a blank shirt. <laughs> it's not yeah. going to happen anymore. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I still have, I mean, to this day, I still find a Barca shirt with a sponsor uh, weird. Same thing mm-hmm. with Athletic Club because they were so long without a sponsor. Yeah. That I almost cannot, uh, it still is weird. I mean, I'm getting more and more use, but it still feels a little bit weird. Yeah. And um, the UNICEF ones weren't so bad, I guess. They weren't um, so bad. Hmm. But then uh, as soon as they went with the Qatar Foundation, I knew, okay, Will be hard for me to buy another Barcelona shirt now. Yeah, I don't think I have any. I have a few Unicef ones. I think the on the most recent was the was it the sixteen seventeen? But I got it sponsored because this was the time when they were not sure whether they continue with Qatar Airways, and so for a while they were selling it without sponsor. I said, okay, this is where I'm getting now a more modern Barca shirt. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was. That was the same shirt I was talking about earlier, the sixteen seventeen one. That's a really yeah, good exactly, one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as you say, it's got um, the one I have has got Qatar Airways on, but I think you could also get it without a sponsor. But yeah. um, I like the. I don't. I'm not a big fan of the sponsor on that one, but um, the design, the 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 design of the shirt is really good. It's classic yes. sort of Barca stripes. Absolutely. The only thing I miss is that um, it has only the two stripes across uh, the chest. I would love if they would have on the side a, a little bit thicker red. Mm. It's that that's, yeah, when I got it, I thought, oh, I obviously this is a very classic parse look. I always always have a stripe. I call it personally Barcelona striping, the thicker, two thick stripes. For mm. me, uh, internally, I call this Barcelona striping. But then uh, if I look at the shirt, it's a blue shirt with two uh, stripes front and two on the back. And I wish it, they would continue the pattern. That's my only yeah. gripe with that shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you get like a size, you know, if there was a size small, it would be like a little bit of blue. And then a size medium would yeah. be better blue because it would still just be blue instead of continuing the yeah. stripe. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I, I, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I I understand, but yeah, it's something that <laughs> this was the time when I think last year issued a shirt with what I call race car stripes, but it had only two black stripes, thin black stripes on the front. And I mm-hmm. hated this jersey with a vengeance because I said this just looks too weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to have black and white stripes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. with for Barcelona, it's it's just a, it it's I mean it's still a very beautiful jersey, I gotta say. So as as you said, it's also the nice nod to the ninety-two uh season where they wore a similar jersey. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean by the fact that it's essentially like a blue shirt with then two two stripes in the middle. You know, I do uh-huh. know what I know what you mean by that. Whereas, you know, if you take like a, a Milan shirt like with the thin stripes, it's just the whole shirt is striped um, exactly. from from you know from from one side to, to the other you know there's no and there's on no, the back too break. most of the time yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so this is my kind of i mean the, uh this, this is anyway another gripe of mine in modern times that uh striped jerseys are mostly now on the back plane and i hate it i yeah. want that the same design goes front and back yeah so being a fan of two striped clubs, it's uh, yeah, it annoys me more. 
I sometimes mm. wish I was like, you know, Everton, it's a plain blue jersey. The, you cannot mess that one up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> most, most of the time, at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But even with these, uh, with these straight ones, there was a period where it was only the uh, player issue versions that would have no stripes because to fit in with the regulations where now it's like even the fans' uh, shirts will have like a... Yeah. A box, or we'll we'll either have a box, or we'll have like a, a completely blank uh, back to it. You know, I think this with the box they do on purpose that you get an exit and they uh, earn a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Because I, at the first time that I saw this, I it's the is it the ninety six ninety seven Milan away. Which is also has is a white shirt, which is but has these what I call race car stripes, which are broken up on the back. I don't have a number on it, but this is exactly a space where a nice number would fit. Yeah. Uh, this was the first time I thought, oh yeah, there should I should get a number, but I don't think it was this was back then, it was just happening this way. But I think yeah. meanwhile that exactly when you have such a space, they wanna keep it in order to that the fans get the number because otherwise it looks weird. Yeah, yeah. I think Juventus had a bunch of shirts like that as well, probably around the same period. Yes. But it was, yes. they still had the stripes sort of on the bottom of the back of the shirt and then they would have maybe like a a big oval for the number yeah. and then maybe a black sort of curved band for, for mm -hmm. like a name set. I remember that, um, I don't know if that was like probably the Kappa period. I can uh, show you one. Let me turn on the camera for that one. Because okay. when you talk about Yeah, that's the one. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly that one. The two yeah, if that had no name and number. Two. If there's yes. no name and number, it just looks look weird. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what, what I totally love is that it mimics the Juventus crest at the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this that's is, right, yeah. I mean, here's the. I totally love that's why I love this shirt and yeah, yeah. it was a nice present well, that's a lotto one yeah I think Kappa might yeah exactly well. yeah yeah Kappa did this let me get take the video away again so that we I hate to do it but I think we have a more uh, stable connection this way that's okay I think yeah Kappa let me see <laughs> another Juventus I'm turning on the camera again. <laughs> like this on the front, on the back, the black box. That's ah, what yeah. they did. Yeah. yeah. So, unfortunately, not original print. This, they had a, they had a, not a 3D print, they had the one with the outline. Otherwise, this would be perfect. That's a nice one. But that was the Uber shirt when I, when I first watched Juve, this was the one that they, with the Ukrim sponsor, so I always wanted to have this one, although they were initially not that great in that one. But that's a very special yeah. to me. Those ones are really cool, and also they seem more readily available than other shirts from that period, like late 80s, early 90s. There seems to be a lot of those Kappa Juventus ones around compared to like... Yeah other shirts from other teams from the same period. I just assume there just was more, there was, they sold more, I guess, because there does seem to be like- No, they, yeah, Milan and Juve shirts from the period, you can get a lot because they were just mass produced at the mm -hmm. time. This was the, by far the two most popular teams in Italy and Serie A was on the top at that time. So yeah, you could get tons of those. Yeah, yeah. Was... There's still a lot of them this was... floating around. Yes, yes. I mean, if for, if for, for me, it's almost a classic PRP period for both of these teams. Uh, both shirts are all special to me, yeah. in a way, because this was when I was really getting into it, and I think the, both shirts stood the test of the time, most of, most of yeah. them. Yeah. I think the Milan ones in particular, because they had such a good team uh, with Van Basten and all those other players yes. in that late 80s and early 90s I guess yes. um, mind you I don't know what, what year did Van Basten stop playing it must have been around that time 
And uh, he stopped in 93. He played the last game that he played for Milan was a 93 Champions League final. Mm. And he was not fit. And so, yeah. I mean, he, he had 91, in 91, 92, he had this super season where he, this was the last great season and then went a little bit downhill. Yeah. But he was still contracted for, was it a year or two afterwards? And then eventually he two years. decided yes. to, call it, to call it a day. Yes. No, he could not walk anymore because his uh, knees were, knee was completely shot. I think he had wrong. Uh, the surgery he did did not pan out this way. And yeah, he was my favorite player at the time. And that was just, yeah, was got it. Yeah. yeah. All Thank the three Dutchmen. This, uh, this was for me the team. <laughs> yeah, we are the team. And I was probably too young to, uh, probably a little bit too young. It was probably a little bit before the period where I was, where I can remember football clearly or where I was could like appreciate football, but certainly yeah. that was the type, that was the team of that time. Yes, absolutely. I mean, this was uh, basically, I mean, it was 1990 where I really got into the game and everyone in my class, they were Milan fans because it was just so spectacular. Although I have to say that there was a certain mystique to it because you couldn't watch that the games were not on TV. You were just reading how great they were playing and then they had this one great performance in the semifinal in 89 against Real Madrid, where, you, where they beat them 5-0. And this is kind of the mystery and the mystique around this whole period, because most of the time they probably didn't play all that great. <laughs> yeah. But you only read about the great players and what and uh, those great uh, games, and uh, they won twice the European Cup in a row, uh, were then stopped by Marseille, but, you know, this was the team at the time that actually was foreshadowing what was about to come. I mean, I remember Berlusconi trying to build uh, a team for Serie A and a team for the Champions League. Kind of, to have the, I mean, this was the time when you could only have three foreigners and, we, and Milan had six, but only three could play. Yeah. Yeah. And wasn't, um... Crazy times in the way, I mean. Wasn't um, Brian was Brian Lowe up at AC Milan sort of before he yeah, came? Yes, he was. At, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. He was at AC Milan. I think yeah. the the four in ninety forty four. I think it was Brian Laudrup. There were no the Dutchmen were uh, Juliet was Oregon. I mean, there was Sevicevic, Boban, uh, Jean Pierre Papin was there. Yeah. Uh, who never did anything in Europe, but in the league he played well. <laughs> so it was it was a, a loaded squad of superstar players. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's no, one I... of those where you think they or Juventus they probably should have won a lot more. But at the time, uh, it was not like that. You could have this dominance because you like we had with Real Madrid and Barcelona. They bought all all the great players because there were still too many restrictions. On there, so there was still a little bit of a more level playing field. Yeah, yeah. I remember as well much later on. One of my memories of Italian football was the Champions League final. Um, what was it like 2002 or 2003? Was it Juventus and AC Milan? Three. Um, Three. Was it 2003? Yeah. Yes. And I remember everyone saying like before the match, oh, this is going to be, like, so boring. It's just going to play out, <laughs> like, a nil-nil. And I was really hoping, like, for, like, a really exciting match. And unfortunately, like, I think everyone, everyone's worst fears, like, were realised on the night. And it was, I think it did. Did it finish nil-nil? I think it did. And then it went. It finished nil-nil, but I think it was the first 60 minutes were actually quite open, especially yeah. when I was attacking, as far as I know. Uh, but yeah, it, it, I, I was annoyed that it ended nil-nil because I mm. think it was a much better final than the 99 one where United beat Bayern in stoppage time. All right, yeah, yeah. Because that, that was a turgid game. This was an mm. absolute stinker of a game. I, I, I remember I said, this is such a boring game. I need to turn it off, actually. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I distinctly remember this was one of the worst, worst finals that I've ever ever see that now everyone remembers it for eternity because of the stoppage time yeah exactly yeah yeah 
Yeah. So yeah, that's how things often go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think Ole got a few more months of his car- career as as manager on that on the back of that. On the yeah, back exactly. Of that night, you know? <laughs> or maybe more than a few months, maybe a year, a year longer than he should have got. But there you go. I'm. I would even say he wouldn't have gotten the initial contract. I mean, he was a caretaker yeah. manager. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but <laughs> I've talked so much about United on my channel. <laughs> it's, I'm. Mm. I'm. I'm. I'm so bored of talking about them because it's just everybody's piling on and having their opinions. It's yeah. It's a dumpster fire in many ways. Yeah. But so are other clubs too. So mm-hmm. rather mm-hmm. talk about those in many ways. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Everton at the moment is probably the team to talk about a lot because there's a lot of stuff not yeah. going right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd rather talk about sharks, to be honest, than talk about. Exactly. No, no, we're, we're not going there. We're not going there. <laughs> no, but I, I need like... to ask you. How do you like the Lampard appointment? That's the only question I've got to ask. Um, just wait and see is my, yeah. <laughs> I guess, is my take on it. Um, mm. I don't really know what to make what to make of him because I don't think that he's he hasn't been a man- manager for very long. And, yeah. yeah, I guess I can only hope that he... You know, I can only hope that he maybe emulates to an extent what Gerard done at Rangers, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. you know, give him a chance and see how it goes. And you know, I think Gerard's already proven that he is going to be a good manager. Whether he's going to be a world class manager probably remains to be seen, but he's going to be a good manager. He's going to be around for a long time now, based on you know what he's what he's done already. And I can only hope that you know Lampard is the same, but I'm definitely mm. yeah, I'm not over excited and I'm not over skeptical either. I you just as I say, wait and see. Uh, yeah. I don't think it could be much get much worse than it has been. So um I think Van I think the the jury's out on Delhi Alley because he's been he's hasn't been good for a while. Whereas I'm probably a bit more optimistic about Van de Beek, just because I think he 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 is a good player, but he just hasn't really had the game time uh, at Man United. So a bit more optimistic about him than 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 say Dele Alli. Um but we'll see what happens. We the 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 we've we're our own worst enemy as a club because we've let the rot set in for a good few years now and we just accept, are not accepted, but we've been mediocre for a long time. We've spent a lot of money and um, we've made a, rot, a lot of bad signings and uh, a lot of bad, you know, bad manager appointments as well. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we we'll, We'll see. And it's and it's a shame because off the field we've got our new stadium, which they started building now. Um mm-hmm. they just I can only hope that Lampard gets it gets it right on the pitch. Um but yeah, let's 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 wait and see. <laughs> yeah. No, mm-hmm. I mean I have to say for Lampard, uh, I mean I think Gerard City did actually smart to go to Scotland and now he's not going to a top club, he's going to I mean, Aston Villa is a big club, but he's not a top, top club. So he's yeah. slowly building up. I think the problem for Lampard was he went too fast, in my opinion, to Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. And Chelsea is not a team where you build your career as a manager to stay very long. No. No. In many ways. So. No. I mean, he was an absolutely fabulous player. Um, yeah. I don't really have anything against him um, at all, really. I just hope that. I hope that it it goes well, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't point to anything, any evidence to to to, to really say that it, that that it will. Um, we yeah. just got, we just got to hope, I guess. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I'm I'm in a similar boat at the, at the moment because my team is also. I mean, we had great moments two years ago, and ever since the rot has set in. And what annoys me really much is that our sporting director, he was a player manager for a long time. He had his own company. 
And there were always some rumors that he basically used his position to get some nice players to last, blah, 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 blah. And then they got him for some illegal contracts and he got out of the club. Now he got banned, he's out of the club and he always had a kind of, uh, a some friction with the president. There are two uh, people that, um, as long as it was working, it was great because they were very yin and yang characters. He's more the, this guy is a more teddy bear. The president is one who likes to speak up loud and, you know, um, shoot some arrows to the Viennese clubs and whatever. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they use this that he is now leaving and the president is basically the almighty person. The problem is he was the footballing brain behind everything. And he just signed, he just put together an investor's uh, company to buy Austria Vienna. And watch out in two, three years, Austria Vienna is going to be a top team in Austria again. And Lask is, although we're also building a new stadium, I'm very much afraid that uh, the good, uh, the football brain has been lost because mm. of personal vanities in many ways so ever since corona hit it has been a downward slide we were top of the league with a good chance to win the second championship and ever since it has been going down 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 mm. it's yeah and so i can feel when when you talk about everton <laughs> we can talk about that yep, <laughs> when we were on do you miss this guy yes big time he is he actually became, uh, he played now half a season with Feyenoord and he's already the fans player of the year. Yeah. He is, he, we absolutely miss him. Uh, there's a big, big, big hole in defense because of him. Because he had a, uh, he had such, he had such a great vision. He was not fast, but his anticipation, at least within Austria, was second to none. Yeah. I can't pretend but to I know. remember. Yeah, I was just saying, I can't pretend yeah, yeah, no. to know a lot about him. I just know that when I asked you, like, what player to get, yeah. you said uh, Trauner. <laughs> yeah, no, I said absolutely. And, 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 and it was funny because the exact same, same shirt I um, got from my cousin for his birthday just a couple of weeks earlier. Okay. And we were kind of discussing which player we should get on the back. Is it Ragush or Trauner? And we said, that Rauner, he's going to stay at last forever. <laughs> and then he moved to Feyenoord. Yeah. And, we, and even he was surprised because he had just, uh, two months before he moved, he moved into a new house that he had built in Linz. So, go figure. Mm, yeah. The I, guess, life is never... I guess if Feyenoord are going to come knocking and pay him more money, then he's, uh, he's, he's not, not going to turn it down, I guess. Nah, and, and this was his one chance to go abroad and really play. I mean, I can totally understand that Feyenoord is playing uh, at a full house if they allow people in every time in Linz the most. Uh, at the moment, you can get because we play in the small stadium is 6,000. And let's say if uh, gets better, 10,000 is is kind of the average if in a good season. Okay. So... It's the fun thing that uh, the Austrian league at the moment is, I think, number eight in Europe. But spectator-wise, it's not. There's Rapid Vienna who gets reg regularly about 15, 18,000. So have a very good. But the other teams, even Salzburg doesn't get as many uh, fans in. Well, I was at a League One match a couple of weeks ago, which was Oxford United. They were playing yep. Sheffield Wednesday. Um and even, even Oxford United aren't, you know, Sheffield Wednesday are a big club, but Oxford United were at yep. home. So they're not like, they're not one of the best supported teams in League One. But even that match was like 10,000. And that's obviously yep. the third, the third tier, you know, three, yes. two divisions below the Premier League. Um, mm -hmm. So it goes to show. And then at my, at my team, Queen of the South, that might be, uh, my home team will be maybe a thousand, one and a half thousand, maybe on average. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Maybe for a big cup match, they might get um, a, a few thousand, but um, even they would they wouldn't get anywhere near ten ten thousand. <laughs> you know, they yeah, don't yeah. Think they could, they, I don't even think they could hold that. 
Um, but yeah. Nine Austria fans are very flaky. So if a team is playing well, they can fill the stadium every single time. Mm. But if there's just a little bit, it's not going that well, uh, support goes out of the window. This is how Austrians mostly are. This that's, is... been, that's been as well, that's been the problem at Goodison for a good few years now. Um, mm. It can get quite toxic there when things yeah. aren't going well. And that's like, you know, 40,000 Evertonians getting on the you know, getting on the players' backs. Um, yeah. No, but at least you get 40,000. In Austria, those 40,000 yeah. would not have voted him go to the stadium. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um, no, it's not it's not nice though when things get to- when things get toxic like ah, that. I don't think it's nice. Absolutely. It's not particularly nice for the fa- you know, the fans either. It's just not nah. sort of puts you off going. Um especially if you're not one of the ones that's, you know, shouting and screaming, you know. Um, yeah. But, yeah. No, it is, uh, is, yeah. There any, is there any hope for Lask then? Is there anything you can cling on to at the moment? I cling on to the, uh, you know, I mean, the European campaign has been going rather well mm. in an easy group, admittedly, but, you know, um, I hope that, you know, I think the 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 tight schedule we're playing so much in Europe uh, definitely had an effect. Uh, the squad is just too tiny, and the playing style that they tried to use was too intense. So I hope that maybe um, once that season is over, maybe next next it's said on the other side, um, it might actually give us the chance. There are some nice and good players in there. I'm just afraid that the talent scouting has taken a step down. I mean, the new signings are now a defender from the Slovak League uh, and an Ivorian from the Bulgarian League from a smaller team there where I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, a year ago, we were at least getting from the other teams in Austria players. And that is what has me a little, a little bit worried that there's a little bit of that going away. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. I with Lask, it's a ten-year cycle. It's every ten years they're great, and then uh, in between it can go really, really bad. Did you get much? That's. Did sorry? Did you get much money for Trauner? And if so, has that been reinvested at all? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, financially, the club is as good as they have ever been. I mean, for most of them, my life, they have been uh, virtually always, they had to uh, worry about getting the players' li- playing license for the league every year, up until the new management took over. So financially, they are really well, took a lot of, um, uh, they got enough money for Trauna. They made a lot of money now in three European campaigns in a row. We're building our own stadium. Uh, so, I mean, in that sense, financially, it's going really well. I am just thinking on the sporting side. Um, it could, it should. I mean, last year we were, we should not have finished fourth. Uh, I, I think a second or third place finish would have been more accurate reflection of how good the team was. Uh, but this year, it's just not working, and too many losses and not uh, adequate replacements. Mm. That's the that's the main problem that is happening. And so, yeah. Yeah, um, they still have a chance to make the top because we have this weird league system where we have 12 teams, they play each other home and away, and then the league is split into an upper six and a lower six, and the upper six plays for the championship, and then the points are in half. So, I mean, it's an absolute nut system. It's the but same as there the, is um, a slim chance. Sorry, it's the same as the Scottish uh, Premier League, S Premiership. It's the same. Really? Yeah, yeah. They split it, uh, top six, bottom six, towards the end of the, the season. And it's 12 teams as well, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but do they uh, have the points or not? Do they what? Sorry? No, uh, in Austria, it is that after this, uh, the for the round of 12, when they split it, the points are slashed by two. So All it's right, really no. 60 points, you start with 30 points. Ah, no. Which no, is. This is the most ridiculous thing that they do. It's all because because Salzburg is so far in the way, so to get a little bit more excitement. 
in, but it is absolutely ridiculous. Okay. In many ways. So yeah. Yeah. So if you had sixty points, you would have thirty. If another yeah. team had fifty, they'd have twenty-five. So you'd be five yes. ahead instead of ten. Instead of ten. Yes. Ahead. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see why that's a bit crazy. Yeah. No, it actually. I mean, um, I I would even say. I mean, if you wanna limit the points totally, it would be better if you then take only. So you keep only the games that you've played against the top six or the bottom six, wherever you are. I think this would make more sense. Yeah, it's at sense. least based on sporting merit and not, uh, you know, okay, you have that many points, but the first half of this only counts half. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, but as I said, Lusk has a slim chance to make it into the top six, but I think it's maybe best if they. I take this, write the season off, and start some other, start next year again, and maybe, uh, yeah, with no European commitments, yeah. maybe there's a chance to go higher. But yeah, at least financially yeah, we are well, which is we which is something I never could have said. I mean, ten years ago, I I thought this will never happen. That the last is well financially. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the same probably forever, and it's sort of just let's get away from the relegation battle um, yeah. and then start again next season. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But that's the beauty. There's always a next season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the problem with ever, the problem, you know, I don't, I don't want to say there's never a danger of them going down because that's, that would just be, you know, naive to say that, but we've been in the top yeah. flight for so long um consecutively now that the thought of the thought of going down is just yeah would, would be devastating i think um I'm, and especially i in england, would agree with it especially yeah, in england no, I mean, it's tough yeah. to get back you know there's big clubs you know even recently have struggled to get back into the premier league mm -hmm. once they've gone down yeah but I mean, for for me, Everton, I always thought of them as one of the big six, big seven teams, at least in England. Also, oh. when I historically, so but you know, when, uh, it's also it's also dangerous to say, as you said, uh, you have been so long in. When I look at Hamburg, they, they they their claim was always we have never been relegated, and then they got relegated, and now it's the fourth year that they are trying to make it up, and this this year's the first time that. I think the chances are the slimmest so far. It's yeah. one of those really sad stories to see because that's a team that should be up there and not Hoffenheim or mm -hmm. Augsburg. <laughs> yeah. I think forever and we just got to hope that there's, you know, at least three teams worse than us. There probably will yeah. be. There but will be three. I'm sure there will be, but I don't, you know, Yeah, I wouldn't want to like put my mortgage on it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no. um, not but yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I make my weekly calculations after every round, and I think even now in that situation, there's only a nine percent chance for Everton to be relegated. So, yeah, the team is good enough, I think. Yeah, and we hope we, you know, hopefully we can get a new new manager bounce as well. Um, yeah, you know, in the in the coming weeks, and maybe that will be enough just to sort of give us that boost of energy, a boost of yeah. confidence to just see the season comfortably out that's mm. that's all you can hope for i think yeah exactly mm -hmm. well i hope it will i hope it will go that way yeah wishing all the best mm. i think i hear the kids want to go to bed so we i think it was really nice chatting to you but i think i have to cut it unfortunately short until no the next time Let's just end I, on that uh, thought of ever and going down now. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not. We have. We end. We ending on the thought of ever going. Uh, Staying things up. Things turning around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. No, no, no. We're not going down. <laughs> well, it was really my pleasure to have you. Um, we know we want to do it another time, a second time as well, when a certain shirt will hopefully arrive with a nice name set on there. Oh yeah, we got a special project. Yeah, we will. Uh, yes. we'll, ca we'll catch up again once that's ready. 
I'm really looking forward to yeah. that one. And yeah, I had a, it was fun chatting with you and finally seeing you in person. It was. <laughs> yeah, like, likewise, awesome to finally catch up with you in, in person, Roland, and uh, look forward mm -hmm. to look forward to catching up again. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Have a good one and chat, chat with you soon. Good evening, Roland. Thank you. Good evening. Bye. 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 I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Oh, <laughs>